Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another episode. I don't know what to call it because uh, I guess uh, my, my last uh, my last video where I uh, posted the how to make homemade mead, I actually lost subscribers. I don't know if uh, somebody don't like alcohol or what the deal was, but so what I'm thinking is I may actually break off and make a second channel where you know the one channel trap will just have or i may even change the name of that i don't know i mean i've i'm not sure what i'm gonna do but i will keep you guys posted um but i may make a second channel with stuff like you know wine making beer making you know whatever i decide to get into there's a lot of stuff i do that some people may not if they're if you're just looking for a trapping channel then you know I understand that I will have that on the one side but during the summer there's not gonna be much because if you can't trap during the summer unless I'm doing nuisance work and the majority of my nuisance work I'm not gonna give out you know tips and tricks to do nuisance work where you're gonna be competition for me I apologize but that's just life but anyways without going on for real long this video tonight is going to be making homemade wine and uh, I know how to do it. Guess what? I've never done it before, but I guarantee you what I'm going to make is going to be good. So uh, <laughs> let me show you what we've got going on. Because when I research something, I don't just, yeah, I'm going to throw this crap together. I, I research it. So, you know, if, if I'm posting this, then I know it's going to turn out right. So let me show you what we've got. For this episode, yes, you're going to see my my monitor there. We have got some uh, always use 100% juice. I'm just going to use store-bought juice on these videos. I've got 100% juicy juice berry, which is very funny because I was looking at the ingredients at the store. And uh, it's got apple juice, pear juice grape juice the only berry juice that's in it is raspberry juice so that's not very berry very berry but uh we're gonna try that we're gonna do some uh 100 meyer grape juice and we're doing a gallon of 100 apple juice which is mott's um some people will call it a cider i don't call it a hard cider because it's wine i mean let's face it a cider is a lower alcohol percentage. A wine is usually 10 to 11% plus. Uh, other, the only ingredients you're gonna need is the juice, the sugar, and this is the yeast that I'm using. This is Red Star Premier Classic Wine Yeast. This typically will go, go up, if you wanna read the whole back of it, you can. It'll typically go up to about 13% alcohol. Now, additional ingredients I'm using, or not ingredients so much, but other things that I feel I need is a sanitizer. This is the Star Sand. It is a no rinse sanitizer that you soak everything in that's going to touch your brew, you know, aside from the bottles. These bottles are already sterile. If not, they would have spoiled while they were sitting in the grocery store. So I'm gonna make these right in the jugs that I bought them in. Uh, need a few few glasses. You could use one glass, I guess, but I'm using a few. You'll need the star sand or some type of sanitizer, whatever you prefer. You'll need a funnel. These are not needed. These are bungs that will fit my airlocks that I'm going to, they will fit in these jugs. I've already checked them. Um, along with the bugs, I, I didn't grab them yet, but your airlocks, you know, they're only a couple bucks a piece. They're, they're not much. If you're going to start making wine, you know, you can use the, the method of putting a balloon over the top of the bottle and poking some holes. Don't forget to poke holes in it. If you're going to put a balloon over the top of your bottle, uh, but you know I, I highly recommend getting these you know they're a couple bucks for like three of them and uh those will fit down in here hold the airlock 
That way, as your yeast is activated and it's working, eating the sugars, creating the alcohol, the carbon dioxide, which is another byproduct of yeast, can escape. And a hydrometer. Why a hydrometer? Do you need it? No, you do not need a hydrometer. But if you're like me and you want to know what your alcohol percentage actually is, you will need a starting gravity reading and a finished gravity reading. And that is all what you can get on the hydrometer. Um, I'm not a expert on this stuff. So if you want to know more about that, Google it like I did. <laughs> yeah, I hate to say that. I, I don't want to, but there are so many videos out there on doing this. So I, I don't want to sit here and say something wrong. Now, uh, what I'm going to do, my first step is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sanitize anything that's going to touch this brew. And tonight we've got stuff in the sink, so I'm also going to be using a, uh, a measuring cup, my uh, test tube for using the hydrometer. I'm going to, all I'm going to do is I'm going to put a gallon of water in this brew bucket and I'm going to add some sanitizer and uh, I will get everything sanitized and we will move on to step one. I wanted to show you one other thing here real quick. Um, for the yeast, I know last, the last video I told you guys about hydrating your yeast, you gotta read the back of your yeast packet and see if they want you to hydrate that or not. Um, this is all just room temperature. I mean, it's probably 70, 71, 72 degrees in here. This is actually the yeast that, what was left over from me making the mead, the, the wine yeast. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weigh this says it weighs four grams. This originally came with five grams in it, plus the weight of the package, because I'm weighing the whole thing. So what I'm gonna do for each half gallon, these are half gallon bottles, the berry, the grape are both half gallons, the apple, which will actually make a apple wine, it's not technically gonna be a hard cider, that is a one gallon. So I'm gonna use this package, I'm gonna split it between because each packet is good for five, up to five gallons. So I'm gonna use about two grams in the berry and two grams in the grape. And I will actually pour off a little bit of the juice. This is the berry juice. I'm gonna pour off a little bit of that into here. Not a whole lot, you know, just yay much or so. And uh, it's at four grams right now. I'm gonna put some in this cup <clears throat> till it weighs two grams. Do it over here so you can see us and see. Okay. We are at two, it's kind of fluctuating between two and three. So I'm gonna give that a little swirl right there. Let that yeast kind of work in. And I'm gonna let that sit. All right guys, it's been uh, just about 20 minutes. I wanted to show you guys uh, something real quick. This is what you're looking for. You see these, uh, these bubbles? You can actually see that one is actually working very much. I don't know if it shows up on the camera, but you can see the bubbles coming out where the yeast are starting to consume the sugars that's in the juice. That's what you're looking for. Your yeast is hydrated. Now, can you just throw the yeast into the, into the juice? Would it affect anything? Probably not. Um, they tell you to rehydrate it, so I rehydrate it, but I'm sure if you just put that yeast, get everything ready, put the yeast in, it would probably be perfectly fine. So we're going to move on to our next step. I got out three cups. If you're wondering what that's for, let me move my uh, 
phone over here out of the way. It's just kind of my monitor so I can make sure that I'm getting everything in frame. You're going to be adding a cup and a half of sugar to each half gallon. You're going to add three cups of sugar to a whole gallon. So you need to pour off some of this juice. That's what the cups are for. You can kind of guesstimate where you need to be at. Pour off a little more on that one. I got that one down. About that much. I figured that should be good. We're going to have to add in a cup and a half of sugar and the hydrated yeast. So that's the berry juice, which we have determined has very little berry in it. You can drink that. That's why I say you could have one cup if you want to like mix them all together. No, I don't want to do that. I'm not a big juice drinker. I'm not a big wine drinker. My wife is more of the wine drinker. Uh, three cups, maybe pour off just a little bit more. I'm just guessing here. I mean, Y'all's guess is as good as mine. I do like grape juice though. And the apple juice, since I'm going to have to add three cups of sugar to that. I'm going to pour off quite a bit on that one. Okay, yeast is very well hydrated. Uh, the juicy juice berry, we're going to add a cup and a half sugar to that. Get my sugar. And as you can tell, I'm not really picky on the juices or the sugar or you know anything really. Doesn't matter what brand you use, you can run to uh, save a lot. If you have a save a lot and get their brand, it really doesn't matter. That is about a cup and a half of sugar. Go ahead and add that in. Without making a mess. It's going to be close. I think we'll be all right though. Put your lid on. I'm going to show this with one. I'm going to go ahead and just show one, one of the juices. Go ahead and get that going. And it's going to be the same thing. Like I said, half gallon is a cup and a half of sugar. A whole gallon is three cups of sugar. I'm not going to video the whole doing all three different juices. You want to shake this up until all the sugar is dissolved into the juice. Got a little bit of sugar to clean up off the counter. Little white gills. How do you know when all the sugar is dissolved? Well, I see a bunch of chunks of sugar still floating around. So. Now, 
get our starting gravity on this juice sugar mixture. I'm just going to pour it straight into the tube. You're probably going to get a lot of bubbles. This has been sanitized. This is already sanitized from the grocery store. My hydrometer has been sanitized. Drop our hydrometer in. Get our initial reading. We'll say 1.114. 1.114 gives us a potential for about 15% alcohol. Now since I'm using the Red Star wine yeast, that is a 13% alcohol yeast. So, it should stop working at 13% alcohol. Should. It may go a little higher, may go a little lower. So we've got, what we're going to end up with is a sweet wine, which is what I was hoping for. Since this has been sanitized, I'm going to pour it right back in the jug. Now, my starting gravity, what I do, give me one second. My starting gravity, I write down on a little sticky note, as you can see, starting gravity and the date. And I'm going to stick that right on the jug. After that, I'm going to add in the hydrated yeast, where your funnel comes in. Make sure you get as much of it as you can out of there. Like a little bit of rinse of water, which yes, it's going to change it just a little bit. Not a whole lot. A little bit of water in there. And then be okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this in the closet which is where I put my stuff to ferment. You want to keep it in a room temperature spot around, yeah, in the dark. You want to, you want to keep it around 70 degrees, it's fine. Keep it somewhere dark and that's the, uh, the best thing for it. And let it sit for, it's probably going to take two weeks for that to, uh, to uh, turn into wine. So, I will let you guys know. I'll do updates on this as it goes along. I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these done up. And uh, they should all be 13, 14%, maybe 12. We'll say 10 to 12% alcohol wines when they're all done. So um, we'll get the rest of these done. Pretty much the same process with all of them. Adding sugar, adding yeast. Because remember, the yeast eats the sugar. And the byproducts are carbon dioxide, which gets spewed out through the airlock and the good old alcohol.